Hello, Digital Graphics. I'm really excited for you guys to get started on your portfolio for this class. By using InDesign to create a portfolio, you'll also be able to create a booklet or portfolio for our final project when you design something for your client. And then you could also use it to get into other universities in the future or even get a job and show your own work to clients or even um, at different companies. So I think this is a really valuable lecture that we're gonna go through here in just a moment. So I've got our longest lecture ever here, and please make sure to still do this quick intro because what that does, I'm just gonna show you real quick. If you go to the YouTube link, I've actually created chapters here, and then I show you how to use those chapters um, in this quick intro. So what we'll be doing is in this first uh, part, the longest lecture ever, you're going to get the basics on how to create a portfolio. And then after you get those basics down, what you're going to do is use InDesign to create a simple portfolio to showcase your Photoshop work and skills. So here's a list of the projects that I would like to see um, in your portfolio. And in addition to that, you can add some. Um, if you've used it for other projects, you can also add those, maybe even replace them. Um, and if there's anything else that you can think of, please go ahead and add it here as well. And this list may or may not update by the time you actually go to your assignment. So this is the um, the first time that we are editing this assignment. So I'm even noticing here that I'd like to also see our floor plan. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to that as well. So it might look a little bit different by the time uh, you're watching this and see your own work. Now your portfolio should be just like the example that I show you. Document, uh, your document should be letter size, portrait, and facing pages. You should have a cover with your name, the semester, course title, and number. And on this cover, you can also select um, a project that you want to showcase. And I'll give you some examples. You should also have a cover page with your name and info. And then you should have one spread, a two-page view for each piece. So please show the progress or variation and you may want to also show the individual pieces you've masked. Please make sure that you have a title for each project, keep the location consistent on each spread, and you can also do a bulleted list of your skills. So did you mask, did you do levels on that? Was there some um, actions that were involved? And what I'm gonna do now is show you some examples over the past couple of years that we've gotten from students. And with these examples, um, I think one thing that you'll notice is some of them just kind of start off and uh, they, they really just barely hit the mark. And then there's others that will show you how you can take a little bit further. And then I'll also show you some things to avoid. Now, please note that the examples that I'm about to show you are roughed drafts. So what I'm hoping happens is that by showing you other rough drafts, you can learn about things to maybe avoid or correct before you turn in your own rough draft. So again, with this one right here, it's, um, it's a very simple title. I've removed all names from here. But one thing that I would like to see is really put some design into it. Um, choose fonts that aren't the standard InDesign font. Please don't yell at me. Um, right off the bat, I think you'll notice that since we just went over the requirements, there is no cover page here. It just goes to table of requirements. It's just kind of stuck here in the upper left, and it goes right into a project. Um, and again, if you like to write about your project, you may, but a simple bulleted list works as well. The other thing um, that I do actually like about this is that I like seeing the pieces that were inserted into the picture. Um, it would have been also nice to see the uh, paraglider as well, and then maybe even the background that was added. So you can really get a sense of the before and after. And again, I'll show you some other ideas. 
So here, again, um, good things are, is that everything is consistent as we go through, right? And you can slow down and kind of take a look at these a little bit more, but I think that it could be pushed a little bit further so that when you do uh, these spreads, remember, please put one project per two page spread, um, work on the fonts a little bit more, and I think that it'll just get better and better. So here's um, another example of someone who actually did a really good job. Um, they picked out a custom font. It wasn't just the standard font. Really good first impression to put something kind of funny on the front page. And then here you can see that this table of contents um, reads a little bit better. They chose not to do a cover page um, but still the layout works because they went right into a two-page spread. So we've got the before, we've got the after. And I will say here is um, everybody should be looking at spell check when you guys go through. If you have room to have these fit across um, the page, you might. Or at least turn off hyphenation so that words aren't cut off like this. Um, so this particular assignment to me is a little bit hard to read, particularly if um, you are trying to show your Photoshop skills. If you are quickly scanning, it's kind of hard to see the difference between them, right? Um, so I think it's actually better if you do an example where you take all the different pieces, like down here, and then show the after. So if I go back and forth, I think that again, this works, but I feel like this one is stronger to do, you know, kind of like the before and then the after. Okay. I hope that helps. And then even here, you can kind of see the before kind of working up to the after. And then we've got all the individual pieces here as well. And then again here, it's not really apparent that these were the shirts that we started with and then we did this. Um, and then again, there's plenty of room here to fit contrast as well as the word color. Okay. And then again, the assessment pieces, I think it's really great to show all the pieces that were used to create the final project, or I'm sorry, the final product. And then same here. So here, just some extra credit work that was done. So not as much time, or not not as much, not yeah, not as much space was taken up for these. But overall, pretty good example. So some of these should be looking familiar to you. These projects. <clears throat> Okay, going on to another example. So here's some things to watch out for when you start working on your portfolio. So the first thing is here, as I go through the pages, please make sure you turn in spreads because see how disconnected these look? It's supposed to be one side and then another side and they look totally disconnected. Now, if you haven't gone into InDesign yet, um, some of these things might not make sense yet, but you can see that these images are all stretched and that has everything to do with the fitting of the image into the image frame. So please make sure that any image you put in is proportional. You shouldn't stretch anything to fit into a square or a rectangle or any shape you're putting in because in the end it looks really awkward. The other thing to pay attention to is um, we have some examples of this in another project. Make sure your work isn't pixelated. There's two reasons why it could be pixelated. One, you might be putting it in too large. So for example, in InDesign, in our crash course, I'll show you how to pull it in at 100%. If you're going any bigger than like 110 or 115% of the original image size, it is going to look pretty pixelated like this. So watch out for that. Okay. So again, just watch out for proportion. Here it's really apparent because you can see the image proportional here 
but then on this opposite side of the page everything gets stretched out and it really takes away from the work. It doesn't quite look as professional and it doesn't read as well. So please watch out for that. Vila Savoy. Now this one is the opposite. It's been stretched long so it looks even squattier than it should be. There's also a couple extra bullets that don't necessarily need to be there. And honestly there's a lot of extra space right here. I'd pull those in a little bit closer together. Okay so we go from like a really low squatty building and then all of the sudden it's you know squished. So more consistency there. And then at the blue on this page, we're seeing a font that we've never seen before, right? And I don't know why we have three original photos. And then yes, it's nice that they're showing the art pieces. Again, spell check is our friend. <laughs> we love spell check. So those are things to watch out for. I'm going to hop into another example now. So on this particular example here, this one again just kind of really hits the basics, but I want you guys to go above and beyond the basics. So again, use a font that's not just the standard font. So here, this looks like it's supposed to be a title and yet it's uh, smaller than the text down here. So please think about that formatting as well. And then again here, as I hope you're starting to see, it's not quite as easy to see this sort of a progression as it is just to show a before and after with the individual pieces that you've used. I mean, you really have to look to see what's going on here. Uh, so this first one is the original, we've added the sky, then we've added some of the people, and then we've adjusted the levels and added the signs. Again, for somebody who is uh, just quickly looking at your portfolio, whether it's a job or to get you into a school, these steps are too subtle to really see the work that you've put into it. Okay. Same here. It's, again, better just to show those individual pieces, just a straight before and then after with all of these individual pieces. Okay. I'm going to hop into another example now. Now here's another example of where these images got a little bit stretched. So for those of you guys who finished up your house project, you know that this house isn't quite that tall. So working with proportion again is important. And then here, this is a really good example of a portfolio, wonderful font, easy to read, um, really nice layout with things, still very simple. Um, but again, some of these things, this is getting a little bit better to show like the before, adding the sky and the after, but it might help to actually list some of these things right below. Now here, layer management, that's, you know, a little bit awkward to have that apostrophe right there. I would also argue that maybe this font is starting to get too big. So watch out that you're not yelling at people with all caps or fonts that are too large. Now here, when we go just to a straight before and after, I think that works really well. So here in that same portfolio, again, I think showing the before pieces and the after works really well. Missing a little bit of consistency here only because here it's I can see that there's a really subtle before and after, but here it's kind of like an after and an after. And remember, these are rough drafts, so these were corrected, but again, I'd love to show these to you prior so that you can catch any of these things before you put them in your own portfolio. Now, this is a portfolio that was really strong both graphically and text-wise, but you'll see that there are a lot of issues with the images that were pulled in. Do you see how pixelated this is? Now again, depending on where you are in the lecture, you may or may not um, have gotten here yet. But in InDesign, you can essentially lose your links. Um, so make sure that you don't lose your original files that you're working on or they will end up looking something like this. The other thing that I'll point out here on this page is that this is page one and this is page two. So this is like a full spread layout. So when you open the book, this is across two separate pages. I love that idea. But this person has spent a lot of time putting in this really nice text and then has left us with just super generic page numbers. So please put that same thought and formatting across all of your work as well. 
So again, you can see the pixelation, wonderful projects, but again, they weren't linked, and so they appear to be really pixelated. Okay. And then these images, uh, they have been cropped to fit the page layout, and I'm kind of impartial to it. Um, most of them have fit well, but you can see here that they are missing the paraglider, so you kind of have to decide what to do. And these, again, since these were rough drafts, there were some things that were still in progress that weren't quite done yet. Um, but again, with some of these, this one I think is cropped a little bit odd, and I would like to see the whole thing on this. Okay. Here's another example. So this example reads really well, um, but there's just a couple things where it's not consistent. So this basketball court assessment, it would have been super easy to fix that and just get that 12 popped over here to make it look even more professional. And the all caps is really, really hard to read. Um, so if you want to keep it simple, again, just do bullet points. If you're going to write something out, please go ahead and use um, lowercase. And one thing that I also pointed out on this one is the biggest image is of the pieces that were used to make the piece and not the piece itself. So when you do a side by side, please make sure that your final piece is the biggest piece, right? So if I were to rearrange this, I would take this final piece over here, pull it up here to the top right, and then show all of the other pieces as being a little bit smaller. See? Then again, really nice layout, but I think the yelling is a little bit hard um, to read. So this was her original submission. This is her rough draft. And then after doing um, some levels and things like that, this is what the final looked like. And as I've mentioned before, I think somebody just looking at these quickly will have a hard time seeing the difference between one, two, and three. I think, again, put those pieces in there so that they can quickly see the before and the after. Now, if it's a big change that you're proud of, like, you know, the scale of this kit or something, go ahead and write it out right underneath so that people don't have to search for the before and after. Um, one other thing, we've got one font here and then it mysteriously changes to the default font here. So please look for consistency on all of these. Then I've got one more to show you as well. So here's another rough draft. Um, good font choices, a little loud just because they are slightly large here, but it, you know, it, it actually reads well. Um, and then again, really subtle differences where it's, for me anyway, it's really hard to see the difference between the top and bottom. You know, there are some signs that have been added but I like the more dramatic, here's all the separate pieces, here's the final, even something like this. And again, the, the font looks nice, it's just a little bit on the large side. Um, it's hard to say exactly what size to use because different fonts are different sizes, but typically when it's just a paragraph font like this, anything between like a, even down to a 9 or a 10 and then up to a 16 should work. Everything, anything bigger than that or smaller than that is going to be really hard. And that's a pretty big range even within that. Okay. All right. And I hope that gives you guys um, enough ideas and background so that you can start to work on your own projects, really get a good sense of showing those befores and afters and, um, how you want to start laying out your work as well before you guys start working on your final project as well. This, this project happened to be on my uh, birthday in fall, so I had them do a birthday card just for fun. And then they also included projects that they used in other classes for this one as well. All right, um, I hope that helps give you an idea of what I'm looking for for your final portfolio. One thing that I would like to mention um, that I hadn't mentioned when we were first going through the assignment is that with your portfolio, I don't expect you guys to just turn it in and be done, but essentially from now until just before the semester ends, I want you and I to constantly have feedback with one another so that you are revising that rough draft and getting it towards 
a more refined and better final. So I would like to see progress on your work at least once a week, and um, you will be getting updates from me at least once a week as well. So have fun with it. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks, everybody.